Community is difficult to find these days. It's slightly becoming introvert where it's more about me, my people, my house, you know, my mosque, my church, whatever. We've got massive unprecedented cuts in the local authority. Corby was a village and in the, I think, 1950s or thereabouts, it expanded due to the steelworks. Bridlington is basically a council estate. It's got very high unemployment. Keithley Eastward it is a series of communities that don't feel that they have got much in common. Kingswood and Hensel Lees, I guess, are two of the most deprived areas in Corby. We have a lot of young families, we have a lot of disabled mental health issues through to the elderly. There's also a lot of financial problems, a lot of debt. I think it's something that's happening all too often around the country. You find that people haven't got enough food to put on the table. The first thing you've got to tackle is unemployment. It has impacted this estate quite a lot with the loss of the factories and the manufacturing jobs. Because wages aren't rising, contracts are less and less secure. Organised criminal gangs do have quite a stranglehold on the estate. It's tough though, because of, you know, poverty plays a big role in that. You know, children are growing up poor on this estate. You know, over 50% of children on this estate live in poverty. It's a struggle for families. People are choosing between heating and choosing between eating, and sometimes neither. We um, looked at financial inclusion and through conversations with um, partnership members and advisors, we felt that it would be a good opportunity to engage the services of Corby and Kettering Citizens Advice. So we have embarked upon an initiative which is six months long, and that will be two sessions a week around financial inclusion, welfare, rights, benefits, immigration, and just general advice. Priddington in Stockport has a reputation. It's a classless deprived area. But there's lots of reasons why people might feel isolated or vulnerable or alone. And those are the kind of people that need to come out and be welcomed into the community. Because they haven't got money, they don't go out and they don't mix. Because if you stop going out, you stop being social and you get withdrawn and you go into a shell then. Could be a single parent with a small child that maybe the small child's not old enough to go to nursery or something like that and they feel trapped in the house. I felt alone for parents of autistic children. There's things out there if you've got a car there was nothing that's why I felt I had no choice but to do it myself. The cut in the bus services within the estate so if you don't have a car or someone who has a car or, or the fare for a taxi, you can become isolated. There's people with long-term health issues who are maybe not going to work and the health issues, mental health issues especially, stop them from interacting socially. I'm not good at conversation making and um, like face to face. You know, people live perfect lives, don't they? At least the way it's presented to others on Facebook and what have you. And I think that, that you know, the knock-on to that is that there's a lot of loneliness out there. There's a lot of people that don't feel connected um, with where they live, let alone one another. There's more migrants and they're in HMOs. I mean, you do need them because there's single people who can't afford to, like, rent a house. But then they kind of stick to themselves. Because of the lack of English and understanding the culture and they maybe they don't recognise buildings for whatever reason, whether they've been here just a short time or whether they've been here a long time and not interacted with the community around them, they haven't got a basic grasp of the English language yet. So we've got a couple of volunteer teachers who are teaching on a Monday morning and a Friday morning. It's 
You've got developers who are moving people in, buying five and six properties in a street and moving people out every six months. That's why it's hard to get a community spirit. There's only probably about four people that I know on my street to speak to. And I've been there 39 years. Movie Land got started initially. The first showing that we had was in October 2015. It's a cinema experience that otherwise some of them just would not be able to afford. They engage with each other, they enjoy it, it gets them out of the house, it gets them meeting other people, it's a very upbeat thing. This way, getting people um, aware of other people in the community, everybody looks out for everybody. I think young people, all young people from all backgrounds, need it more than ever now. The youngsters have got the pressure of this kind of crazy world which is changing so fast. And what we found, like after nearly 12 years of doing this, the number one thing our young people in Keithley wanted was just a space. Big gangs of youths on the street. What else are they supposed to do? There's nowhere for them to go. Um, if there's nothing for them to do, they're going to find something to do. So then they're getting a name about themselves, they're being criminalised from a young age. You have 10 year olds, 11 year olds getting a, a, a criminal record when there's no need. People should have an opportunity, a space to gather, to express themselves and to be together. So we wanted to encourage community and so having a space where people could be, we just come and chill and have a cup of tea and coffee, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your babies, whatever, and get to know the people in the community. You go to a lot of other areas, and maybe, maybe sort of say, oh, we go down to the community centre and everything. We didn't have that in Keithley East. Starry's project started in 2007 uh, with a football, cricket bat, and a tennis ball. So me and a couple of local friends who were going out and playing football anyway as elder lads, we thought, why don't we just, when we're playing football on this court, why don't we just book the next one as well and let the little lads come and play so they get off the street. We ended up here in 2015 and set the whole Star Youth Project to where it is now. So our slogan is engage, develop, flourish. We've currently got about 30 young people who call themselves Star Youth Project, you know, members. Ideally, we want to have 100 young people in here when we're fully set up and running. A community only becomes a community if the people interact with each other. Otherwise, it's just a lot of people living in an area. Community, in the long term, is the answer to a lot of humanity's problems. As central government becomes more hands-off, there's less support for people. That support comes from your local community, from the people around you. Communities generally understand their issues better than anyone from the outside and they're able to come together and solve those issues in a more natural and organic way. It's those residents that live it, that, that breathe it, that know what's going to work in their area. When people do it for themselves, that's where that belonging comes from. This is ours and we've done this. If we don't do it, you know, local raised people don't give something back. Who's going to do it? <laughs>